You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Monday, September the 17th, 2018. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. The man whom police have called Motorcycle Bandit has pleaded guilty to conning elderly drivers of cash. Jasmine Patterson has the details from this morning's plea court session. Appearing in magistrate's court, 47-year-old Devonshire resident Troy Woods dubbed the motorcycle bandit by police, admitted to dishonestly obtaining around $900 cash from seven different drivers between August 11th and September 9th this year. He also admitted to taking a motorcycle without the consent of the owner in Devonshire on August 6th, stealing a handbag on August 30th in Smith's Parish, and attempting theft on August 13th in Devonshire. Prosecutors say the defendant flagged down multiple drivers, some aged 80 years old, using a false story that they had struck him and he needed cash for repairs to his bike handlebars. On a few occasions, he followed the victims to the ATM to obtain the cash. The victims reported the incidents to police. Woods was later arrested at his home on September 13th following a match of his description, to which he replied, I understand. The defendant has previous like offenses and is a self-confessed heroin addict. Magistrate Kumisi Tokumbo ordered pre-sentencing reports and remanded Woods to Westgate. The matter is adjourned to November 2nd for sentencing. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, some very sad news this evening. Family members and the sports fraternity are today mourning the death of 20-year-old Mazai Birchall, who died in a road traffic collision on Saturday morning. The accident took place around 4 a.m. Saturday morning in Paget near the Trimmingham R Hill Roundabout. Birchall was an outstanding striker for the Robin Hood Football Club and close friends with Antoine Russell. Robin Hood's head coach, John Barry Newsom, said he was the ideal team player. For me, uh, as a coach, he was an ideal player to coach. He, you know, I never had to wonder, you know, if Mazi was going to give his all. Um, when I gave him instructions, you know, he, he listens. Even if he disagreed, he would still carry out the, the, you know, the team plan, so to speak. So, um, as, as a coach, as one of those people that you, you call a coachable student of the game, I guess. Um, for me, individually, like, outside of football, Mazi, Mazi was just a humble guy, man. Like he never. Had him speaking too ill about anybody else. He was always happy, always had a smile on his face. Um, and he, and he, was, he was a balance to my team in particular. And my team, I have a lot of guys um, with strong personalities. And, and Mazi's personality actually balanced off a lot of that. A lot of times when things would get heated, Mazi would be calm and he's storm. And um, in, in, it's, it's sad to, to even have this conversation about a guy that's so young, that has so much promise. And um, he'd, he'd definitely be a big miss, not only to, to the football and community, but to, to our society, man. There's so many kids his age that are not doing the right things, and he was one of the good ones. So um, it's really fair to, to, to kind of even have this talk about him not being around. We'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Win a trip or two to the 2019 Trinidad Carnival. When you purchase a car from Bermuda Motors, your name will be entered into a draw for a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip for two, including flights, accommodation, and tickets to the Trinidad Carnival. Visit Bermuda Motors on Church Street or bermudamotors.bm. Bassett, custom designs by you at Furniture Walk. So, how do you like it? Choose your arm style, then select your pieces. order exactly what you want your style your way sofa love seat chair sectional you name it bassett your style your way at furniture walk healthy people and healthy communities 
the Ministry of Health is presenting their 8th annual Celebrating Wellness event, September 26th at Bars Bay Park, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. This is a free event for the whole family, featuring music, free health screenings, healthy food vendors, career skills development, and much more. Be healthy, stay healthy. Come and celebrate wellness with the Department of Health. This is a message from the government of Bermuda. Welcome back. Well, the U.S. consulate is stressing that U.S. law relating to the immigration of Bermudians has not changed. The consulate is setting the record straight amid continued reports of Bermudians missing flights overseas and facing delays at the U.S. border because their Bermuda passport contains the newer country code. The government continues to lobby the British government to restore the BMU code, which tells U.S. border officials that the traveler does not require a visa since the British took over the printing of passports in 20. The newer BOTC passports have the code GBR, which lumps Bermudian travelers with those from the UK and other territories, which require visas until the issue is sorted out. The consulate says Bermudians have options. Here's Council General Marcy Brown. If you're a Bermudian and you have one of those new passports that was printed in the United Kingdom post-2016, give or take, is I think when they made the change, and you're intending to travel to a foreign location, not just a trip to the United States, but somewhere else, and you want to facilitate your return to Bermuda, you may wish to apply for a visa. Again, it's not required, but we've been hearing so much from Bermudians who are undergoing a lot of inconvenience, sometimes financial hardship, because they're not being able to board their flight and make it back to Bermuda via the United States. We just want people to know that that's an option that's available to them. And we asked Ms. Brown why the United States did not change its systems to identify Bermudian passport holders until Bermuda sorts it out with London. We really do try everything we can to facilitate the travel for individuals, but at the end, that is something that we, that the Bermuda government, um, we have no control over the passport printing or the passport coding since they're not our passports. So we do have available on our website um, information regarding the Bermuda visa exemption, and people are welcome to print that out and carry them with, with them when they travel. However, that is not a legal document, and in some cases, we've received calls from people who say they have that card and it's not being recognized by the airline ticket agent. U.S. officials also point out Bermudians may only get an ESTA under the Visa Waiser program if using their United Kingdom passports. Devastated. That is how one artist has de described the decision by the Corporation of Hamilton to remove the Gombe, Gombe portrait mural she was commissioned to create following a dispute over biased representation. Jasmine Patterson has that story. Artist April Branco says her hyper-realistic depiction of the H&H &H Gumbe troops in and out of costume received overwhelming praise from the public. Now this is all that remains. I was devastated. I mean, I have never experienced so much grief and pain and anger and frustration in regards to a creative project in my entire career. I was heartbroken. I cried for two whole weeks. It was every time I thought about taking it down, I felt physically ill. And when a month had gone past, I had sort of processed out my grief about it and realized that I, I was backed into a corner and had no option. The corporation sought Ms. Branco's talent for painting traditional gumbays and requested that a mural be erected focusing on colorful faces. She revised the version submitted after realizing it needed improvements before paint touched the wall. I want to give some human connotation to the gumbays. We because they're covered from head to toe, we generally have this idea that they are generic, impersonal entertainers and entertainment. And what I'm trying to do with my art is elevate our understanding of their humanity and also our history. They're synonymous. She decided on four portraits of captains of the H&H &H Gumbay Troop, a band she paints exclusively. She was given the okay by a corporation project coordinator to make the changes. There is no clause in her contract saying she'd be prevented from doing so. We have observed that the mural has progressed far away from our original layout. And while it is beautiful, it is not what we asked for. And we will need you to revert back to the layout which was originally decided upon. And I was flabbergasted. I was in actual shock because I was a day and a half, two days maximum away from finishing. 
The reason being that other troops had made complaints that the mural was not representative of all gumbays on the island. She was given an ultimatum, take down the mural, go back to the original layout, or paint one gumbay captain from each troop. Two options, she says, were equally impossible. Several lawyers have reached out to April and were told she's taking their advice not to make any payments to the corporation until the situation has been reviewed. I definitely do not feel that they deserve a dime for this absolute mess up on their part that I am being penalized. Not only have I lost my work, I'm, I've also lost a month of my life and hundreds of dollars in material that's supposed to come out of my pocket because there was a breakdown in communication between an administrator and her team. Following a groundswell of support for the artist on social media, she says it's been positive and hopeful. The hashtags I stand with April Branco and there's no such thing as a generic gum bait are now trending. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Turning to weather news, another gorgeous day today. Will these beautiful conditions last? Here's the latest from AccuWeather headquarters. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and hopefully you've had a fantastic Monday. It's been pretty nice outside today, and we'll start to see a little bit of moisture working its way into the island over the next uh, day or two here, even into the overnight hours. We have an area of low pressure situated to our south, and that's basically just going to spin up some more spotty showers as we continue through time. But we're not expecting anything significant as far as rainfall fall is concerned. So taking you into some of our current stats right now, temperatures across the island sitting in the low 80s, a pretty pleasant evening, humidity right around 70 percent, slight breeze out of the northeast right now, 8 to 12 knots. Our water temperature still sitting nice and warm at 85 degrees, and we don't have any uh, issues out there. If you plan on hopping on the boat, maybe into tomorrow, waves inside the reef, one to two feet outside, a little bit higher between three and five feet. So the forecast How's it looking as we continue into tonight? We'll call it mild with a temperature of 76 degrees. We'll have a couple of patchy clouds out there late tonight. And as I mentioned, that disturbance to our south will kick up some moisture, so we'll allow for a few spotty showers as we continue into tonight. As far as ma marine alerts are concerned, we don't have any kind of advisories or warnings from the Bermuda Weather Service. Our low tide coming in after 10 o'clock tonight. And our high tide coming in just before 4 o'clock on Tuesday morning. And how's your Tuesday looking? We'll allow for a few showers around the island. Otherwise, we'll have intermittent uh, some peaks of sunshine throughout the day. 85 degrees for your high temperature, a low of 74 degrees. So no problems there. Our future cast showing that area of low pressure to our south. Again, some spotty showers associated with it. And then the next thing that we're going to be watching out for is uh, the frontal boundary, a weakening front will be making progress off the east coast as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll have that to watch for as we head a little bit later on into the week. Some of our current conditions right now in Jamaica, Barbados and Trinidad. You can see it's pretty unsettled. We don't have any tropical development, but down there we do have the remnants of Isaac. So that's why they're seeing the enhanced showers and thunderstorms into the east coast. They have what's left of Florence. Of course, no longer a hurricane but it is still making for some heavy rain at times. And we'll see some of that rain tomorrow in New York City, also Boston. So there will be some travel delays. Heads up if you're heading that direction for tomorrow. Your extended forecast here in Bermuda. Temperature-wise, we stay in the low to mid 80s the next couple of days. A few spotty showers Tuesday and also Wednesday. And then later in the week at this point, it is looking nice and pleasant right into the weekend. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. I was diagnosed with uh, illness, very frightening because my son had just turned one and it was a cancer. So I'm young, new baby, and I needed to get the care that I knew would be definitive so that I wanted to be around for him for a very long time. I got in contact with BFNM and BFNM was able to commit at that time to doing at least 50% so we were comfortable, okay, well we're going to go. Uh, we got off the plane actually the day of the procedure and on my way to the limo, my case manager called and she says, Kiana, 
we got it, you're covered at 100%. And I cried all the way to the office because I was just so happy. The BFNM difference is that I really felt that the case manager really was concerned about my overall care. And because of that, I really appreciated them. I think that personal care, that willingness to listen, and then to work until they were able to get it so that I could get full coverage really made the difference for me. At Big Saving Zone, we believe your children deserve a happy space to call their own, full of color and excitement, where their imagination can take flight from fun to functional. We have a delightful selection of kids' furniture built with the same quality that you've come to know and trust at our everyday low prices. Create a room that your little ones will love only at Big Saving Zone. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Located in the Commercial Park, Southside, St. David. Call 297-4440 or click BigSavingZone.com. Big Saving Zone, making your house a home. From the very beginning, it was always our singular focus to do whatever it takes, use every possible resource to fight cancer, and never lose sight of the patients we're fighting for. Our cancer treatment specialists share the same vision. Experts from all over the world working closely together to deliver truly personalized cancer care. And these are the specialists we're proud to call our own. Expert medicine works here. Learn more at cancercenter.com. Appointments available now. From sunup to sundown, a dedicated team of highly skilled workers using state-of-the-art technology quietly work to keep Bermuda moving. Bermuda's national and commercial institutions and its people rely on goods imported through Polaris from across the globe. Over 30,000 containers are unloaded each year, representing everyday goods, groceries, vehicles, and so much more. Polaris Holding Company is the powerhouse group behind Bermuda's docks with interests in heavy equipment and real estate. Polaris is quietly powering Bermuda. Welcome back. Well, if you feel like cyber attacks are on the rise, you would be right. The volume and intensity hit a record last year, and there appears to be no let up in 2018. Governments, businesses, individuals, no one is safe. As Tony Waterman reports, small governments like Bermuda could find the fight most challenging. It was a speculative cyber attack which threw the Bristol airport back to the 1900s this weekend. Holiday makers made to read handwritten flight information off whiteboards after the digital screens were taken offline. A spokesman said it was a ransomware attack. Ransomware was also blamed for crippling part of the UK's National Health Service last year, while one and a half million patient medical records were stolen in Singapore, including the Prime Minister's. Governments are no different than private citizens or uh, companies in struggling to protect their valuable information from cyber criminals. Protecting against cyber attacks can be even more challenging for smaller countries and companies, which have the same sensitive information to protect, but fewer resources to do it. A single ransomware attack can cost a company more than $700,000. That's according to research by Kaspersky Lab. Duke Dembowski, a former senior Department of Justice cyber official, says technology could help level the playing field. What's changing a little bit um, the calculus is more uh, services and uh, cloud resources, more tools that are accessible at more reasonable price points to be able to bring smaller governments um, up to par with uh, their larger uh, counterparts. That's because the main providers of cloud computing are giant corporations like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and IBM. Their entire business model is based on security, so they tend to have strong internal practices, expertise, and high levels of protection. But Dembowski says that doesn't mean those buying the service can let down their guard. And the vast majority of the breaches do not involve extremely sophisticated technical techniques. Um, what they really involve in most cases is a failure on the human part. Uh, an individual who clicked on that phishing email link, uh, entered their password or told someone over the phone their password. It was someone who was pretending to help. Um, those are most of the cases. And so if you take away those situations through adequate training and situational awareness, a lot of the risk uh, goes away. Meaning, everyone has a role to play when fending off a cyber attack. Tony Waterman for Bermuda Broadcasting News. 
And Luke Dembowski will be the keynote speaker at the International Cyber Risk Management Conference in December. That event taking place at the Hamilton Princess and Bermuda Broadcasting is the media partner. In other news, a newly promoted officer becomes the highest ranking female member of the Bermuda Police Service, but sees her achievement as being significant on a far greater scale. Gary Moreno has that story. Meet Superintendent Naima Astwood, the now highest ranking female member of the Bermuda Police Service, having been promoted to superintendent following what's been described as an exhaustive promotions process. While thankful for the recognition, Superintendent Astwood expresses her belief that it brings with it a responsibility that transcends the precincts of the BPS. Naturally, we have uh, several women within the Bermuda Police Service and we're looking to push them up through the ranks. It's not representative in the senior levels where all females should be and we're looking to inspire them to see them move up through the ranks. Women have a voice and it's time that we have a voice at the table and we give our perspective. We don't want to be equal, we just want to be counted around the table and to give our perspective. Inspiration to other women, not just within this service? Hopefully I am. I will continue to reach out to them as they continue to reach out to me. Sometimes it gets very lonely when you're the only in a certain rank. So I look for their support and I look to give them support as well. Helping to make Bermuda safer for almost 24 years, the officer, a practicing Muslim, says her faith has guided the manner in which she approaches her work. In Islam, we, we have a quote from the Quran that says, justice must prevail, but is against the next of kin of your family. And I've always taken that quote very seriously. I look at justice very seriously and I look at it every day when I make my decisions in community and I embrace my community. And Islam is about unity and is about community. And I will be using my faith as well as my community to help me proceed in my job. Ms. Astwood has been involved in a number of high-profile investigations during her time and now will play an instrumental role in the reinvigorated community policing initiative, which Stephen Corbishley, the Commissioner of Police, has repeatedly stated under his watch will play a significant role in anti-crime efforts. Superintendent Aswood has achieved her rank today on merit. It's not because of her gender. But I do recognise that her role as a female is really important, not just for the police service, to demonstrate to my officers and staff that if you're a woman, you can achieve fantastic things, whether they be through promotion or other particular roles. But it's also her role in local communities. I think she's an example that women have a clear part to play in our society, in our business, and the way in which we deliver public service. The new superintendent is clear that she has aspirations to attaining higher rank, but for now will focus on her new duties and responsibilities. Her dad, Frederick Williams, though, seems intent on ensuring his youngest daughter does not rest on her laurels. I have seven children, I, even, I adore all of them. I love every one of them. But it is a great achievement today, and I'm really proud of my daughter. And I hope this is not the end. I hope she keeps going. What role did you play in all of this? Because I'm sure there was some level of discipline. It's a little struggle, but I got over it. <laughs> Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Gary. Well, still to come, World Basin will have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. Stay with us. This is Jane. Jane has been living independently until her recent fall. Because of the injury she sustained, her mobility is now limited. Jane chose Bermuda Inn Home Care to assist her with her activities of daily living. The caregivers at Bermuda Inn Home Care are trained to care for individuals with limited mobility. They incorporate exercise and activities into Jane's care plan given by her doctor and physiotherapist. The caregiver helps the family select the right medical equipment from Lighthouse Medical Supplies. Lighthouse Medical Supplies have certified durable medical equipment specialists available to help. Falls are the number one cause of injury in older adults. Falls lead to head injuries and hip fractures. Fall prevention is critical. Call Bermuda in Home Care to speak to one of our home care specialists. Call us now for a free home care assessment, 705-4424, or visit us at www.bermudainhomecare.com.
Turning to sports news, it was an emotional weekend around the football community. Delray Rollins played in the 2020 final in England and females dominated the Open Water National Swimming Championships. Earl Basin has the details and so much more in tonight's sports report. The football community was mourning over the weekend as Robin Hood footballer Mazai Bertrand lost his life in a motorcycle accident on Saturday morning. Robin Hood would play their Premier Division match later Saturday night against the Devonshire Cougars. Members of the PHC Zebras, Bertrand's teammates prior to joining Robin Hood, would join them in a huddle on the sideline at the BAA field prior to the match. A passionate speech from Sequoia Robinson urged players from both teams to dedicate the remainder of this season to Bertrand. The two teams were joined by Devonshire Cougars players in a moment of silence prior to the start of their match. The match would end of 1-1 with Lejean Simmons scoring for Robin Hood in the 42nd minute. However, Noon Gould in the 81st minute earned the Devonshire Cougars a point. In other Premier Division matches, it was North Village Rams 3, Paget Lions 0, BAA 1, Dandy Town Hornets 4, PHC Zebras 3, Boulevard Blazers 1, Crossroads 5, Somerset Trojans 3. In First Division, it was St. George's Colts 1, Somerset at Eagles 1, Flanagan's Onions 1, Vasco de Gama 0, Hamilton Parish 1, Southampton Rangers 6, Wolves 4, Devonshire Colts 2, Island Rangers 4, Young Man Social Club 0. Delray Rollins and his Sussex teammates went down by five wickets in their Vitality Bass final against Worcestershire. Batting first, Sussex scored 157 for six. Rollins scored 21 off of 16 balls, hitting two fours. In reply, Worcestershire would score 158 for five off of 18.3 overs. Rollins and his teammates had earlier advanced to the final with a 35-run victory over Somerset in their semifinal. Sussex would score 202 for eight. Rollins scored 18 off of 12 balls, hitting two fours and a six. In reply, Somerset could only manage 167 for eight. Flats Victoria would put it all together on their way to winning the Bermuda Cricket Board's First Division 2020 title at the Seabreeze Oval yesterday. Batting first, Warwick Workmans were bowled out for 127. Clay Smith and Cameron Jeffers were the top scorers with 38. Opener Smith's runs came off of 36 balls that included 8 fours, while Jeffers' runs came off of 24 balls, hitting 4 fours and 2 sixes. Dejan Carey was the pick of the Flats Victoria bowlers with figures of 4 overs, 4 for 31. In reply, Kamal Lever Rock scored 75 off of 29 balls, leading Flats Victoria to a score of 131 for five. Lavrock hit nine fours and six sixes. Corey Smith was the pick of the Warwick Workman's bowlers, with figures of four overs, one maiden, two for 18. Females dominated the Bermuda Amateur Swimming Association's Open Water National Championships held at Clearwater. The 5K Open Water Swim was won by Elaine Malawi, who was clocked across the line in a time of 1.13.13. Dan Hugo finished second in 1.21.05. During the 5K Open Water Race, Mike Cash swam the distance dragging a tree log. Cash would complete the course in a time of 1.35.23. Flora Duffy swam to victory in the 1500 meter Open Water Swim. Duffy was clocked across the line in a time of 2011, with Brian Desmond second in the time of 21.02. During the 400-meter open water swim, Marley Hall stuck the fastest time of 6.04. Rajon Patton was second in 6.16. Gabriella Arnold and Caden Hopkins concluded competing at the USA Cycling Collegiate Track National Championships. Arnold was representing Marion University, while Hopkins was representing Fort Lewis College. Arnold finished fifth, competing in the women's 50-meter time trial final, stopping the clock in a time of 38.65. With a time of 106.75, saw Hopkins finish ninth in the men's kilo time trial final. Hopkins helped Fort Lewis College finish fifth, competing in the co-ed team sprint final. Final, they would clock a time of 2.14.85. The Bermuda men's national sevens team won the Bermuda Rugby Football Union's sevens tournament at the National Sports Center on Saturday. The national team are preparing for the Rugby North Americas tournament, which will take place in Barbados. The police defeated the Mariners 38-5. The Renegades will get by the teachers 17-7. The national team defeated the Mariners 26-0. They would then defeat the police 49-0. The teachers picked up a 24-21 win over the Mariners. And then the national team picked up a 21-0 win over the Renegades. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. 
Thanks, Rob. Well, that's our newscast for tonight. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for sharing your Monday evening with us, everyone. Hope to see you here again, same time, same place, tomorrow night. Good night.